Hello there, Penn State Mac Admins Conference. How is everybody doing? All right, that was a little weak, but I'll let it slide because I'm sure your brains are full. And if they're not full yet, they're going to be full by the time this conference is done. My name is Randy Sakes, and unfortunately, I couldn't make it out there for the, the conference this year. And I'm a little disappointed in that, but you know what? I still wanted to make sure that the content I was going to present, you guys are going to have access to. I'm going to try to do this in about 10 minutes just so that I don't take up too much time and I allow hopefully some flexibility with um, what Mr. Kim and Mr. Hester are also going to present and this fits in nicely. If you have any questions about what I'm talking about, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. My handle at rsakes is on the bottom of this first slide. So let's go ahead and get started. The product that we went with is Mass360 from Fiberlink. And we looked at this and a whole bunch of other MDM products because we were in a need with 150 plus iPads across various classrooms being deployed. We realized that the method being used in the past to manage these, which was two carts of 24, was iTunes and a USB sync cable. And we realized this can be done better. This can be done more efficiently. Let's look at a product that does it. We also realized we had multiple usage scenarios. I'm going to talk about those of what they look like uh, shortly. And really the focus I had um, when I started here in looking at iPads was I don't mind the pre-deployment time. I don't mind getting them set up, making sure they're ready to go. Because if I make sure they're ready to go and everything is functioning properly, that's going to pay dividends in the end with time saved of support. And they're going to be reliable and they're going to work. So we really looked at post-deployment time. Once I hand off this iPad to its user, what product is going to allow us to manage those and to make them usable in how we want to use them for everybody involved? So the scenarios, we primarily have three. We're looking at a one-to-one, -one, and then that's an example where we have an iPad with a specific student, or it's with a specific teacher for a dedicated use. As an example, we have some speech and language teachers who use iPads with, uh, with students. So we have specific applications tailored to that academic area on them. We have carts. And that's the example where you have the shared usage with 24 that synchronize and they just need to be working. There isn't a lot of customization done on these because they're intended to be used by anybody. So they have a core set of apps, and there's a required consistency on them. That way, the time isn't wasted looking for uh, which 10 iPads have this application installed. And really where we wanted to use the MDM the most was in our classrooms. We had the opportunity to put in about 24, 25 classroom sets of iPads. And these are smaller sets. There are five iPads, roughly, per class that are being used for targeted uh, academic areas. They're being used in centered activities. But the concept behind these is once they're given to the teacher, we don't want to touch them again. And it's not because we hate touching iPads or we don't like visiting classrooms or we think the little sneezy, drippy, huggy kids are bad. But really it's just time. If there's a teacher in a classroom that wants to experiment with a free app, it's silly for that teacher to have to take the time to submit a request for IT to evaluate the app, to acquire it, to deploy it on the device, to say that it works, to give it back to the teacher. So we looked at that scenario and said we want to handle that a little bit different. We want to make sure that we can give the ownership to the teacher but then still have some IT centralized control over the device. Apple IDs are another big one that we worked with. I'm sure there's a lot of sessions and questions on Apple IDs. We had three cases one-to-one, -one, so we have an iPad tied to a specific Apple ID. We have a classroom, and the classroom account works in a very similar manner to an institutional Apple ID. What we did in this case is we purchased a free app with that Apple ID, set it up as a free account so that you cannot pay, purchase paid apps, and we gave that to the teacher. It's still managed the same way, so apps that are purchased through the VPP are tied to that Apple ID, but that ID is flexible in that it applies to um, 
our classroom set. So that would mean we purchase Keynote, we purchase five for the classroom so that it's available on all five devices. And the other scenario we had is a cart. And that's, again, that 24 devices. Those are all set up with Apple Configurator. Those are all supervised devices. They are tied to our institutional Apple ID, and we push out apps that way. What were the strengths of this product? We picked Mass360 from Fiberlink, and there's a lot of different reasons we went with it. And if you haven't looked, check out Enterprise iOS. There's a great MDM comparison chart available. But what we had here that, that really made it stand out, and, and we saw this as very beneficial, was the ability to migrate from a trial environment into a production environment very easily without re-enrolling our devices. When we were piloting this, we kind of built our skeleton um, structure, if you would. So we built a cart, we built a classroom or two, we added some devices and played with the management settings that we could behind these. And it was really beneficial once we made the decision to use this product, the steps we needed to do in order to transition from the trial to the production environment was send in a purchase order. The support behind it was great. Whenever we had issues, we could call them up. We didn't experience long hold times. They were very responsive. And that, that was a big, important aspect for us. It was cloud-based, so we didn't have any equipment on site. The UI interface. That was one that was recently updated and previously was a little kludgy, but it's a whole lot better now. So I definitely want to say that the strength, one of them behind it now, is it's really easy to navigate the UI. The other aspect we had that we loved about this was IPA distribution. We occasionally would run into an app that was free for a day, and we would purchase it and not put it into Configurator in time. So that would mean Configurator, for example, would think, oh, this is a paid app, I need VPP codes. Well, we purchased this with this uh, Apple ID when it was free. We could distribute that IPA, and it held on to the initial owner that purchased it. That was really huge. That also meant that we could use that same mechanism to deploy and make available updates towards the end user. I do want to talk about weaknesses, because I think when you look at any product, you can find areas that can do better, or areas that just say, this doesn't work for me. And this could be me specifically. The initial device arrangement took some time. We really didn't have the ability to put iPads into multiple groups easily. And if we did, we had to work with conditions. We had to do a search to find our devices and then add it to a group. We didn't necessarily have that dynamic capability that was out there to go ahead and say, I want to pull this device group with all my devices that are running iOS 5. Again, the initial portal UI was a little confusing, but again, as I mentioned, they did make that a lot better. Some of the components that you can set with restrictions and configurators, such as iMessage and guided access, aren't there in this management portal. So that means if we have a day where we need to utilize our iPads on a cart for testing, I can't lock those in via MDM to a specific app. And the enrollment method. We had to go ahead and pull these in, scan a QR code, or type in a URL. Now, there also is a bulk enroll CSV, but what we really would have loved to see on this is a URL we can give to our end users, have them put in their username and password, and just enroll the device. Major requirements. What did we feel was important? First off, easy reporting. And I'm going to go in the reverse order just to keep you guys on your toes so you don't uh, fall asleep listening just to me talk. Easy reporting. It's very easy for us to run a report on which devices are running not the most recent version of Keynote and get a feel for what our fleet's doing. We can look at easily, again, our VPP code utilization. All that is handled through the portal. Centralized management is nice. Um, the app, as most MDMs do, provide a app catalog where we can publish applications for end users to install easily. What we love about this is when we have a teacher that purchases a new app that we need to get onto a pack of iPads. We'll get the app, we'll upload the VPP codes, we'll make the app available, and I send them an email that says, Mrs. Smith, the app that you purchased, really awesome app, is now available for your devices. Please go to the app catalog and install it. And this really allows a great partnership between myself from IT and the classroom teacher. 
so that we can go ahead and kind of share the responsibility. End user upkeep, again, once we've deployed these to our teachers, they're in charge of all their app updates, they're in charge of being able to purchase free apps to evaluate them, and they submit a requisition for any apps that require to be paid. So that's what we really found to be useful um, and nice through this product. So hopefully, um, things I've learned, you really need to plan out your devices and your usage. Think about how that device is going to be used because you need to realize you're not going to be able to go and use one giant hammer to hit all the different nails for your usage scenarios. We really had to find a product that was flexible in a one-to-one, -one, in a cart, and in other scenarios where the classroom teacher has ownership. And app ownership. That one's a constant battle, a constant learning curve to figure out how to do it the best. We just went with um, really treating each Apple ID as if it was an institutional one so that all the apps are owned by some Apple ID belonging to our school. Well, that puts me right around the time that I want to talk so I don't take up too much of this session. But again, as I said, feel free to ask me any questions that you want via Twitter. I'll be around. Um, I'm always on there. And hopefully the conference is great.